Hi. Thank you. Thank you. So I have 30 minutes to say something smart, which is very difficult for me, the 30 minutes and the smart. So if I had to say anything, I'd say, if you would give me your attention for 30 minutes, right, undivided attention, not on your phones, not going out, not drinking water, but watch me for 30 minutes, I'm gonna give you the best that I can to help make a dimensional difference in your life, to make you think at a higher level, attract what it is you want into your life, and be fulfilled as a human being. Fair enough, you in the game? Or do you want another procedure? Would you like a report of findings? Would you like how to get another new patient? Or would you like to know how to stand in your office or in your home or on your pillow and use your brain to create anything that you want in life for that I know to be true because I did it and I learned it here. And I've been practicing more years than most of you are alive, but it works. And today I had the particular honor to watch Dr. Tony DeRamis and Corey Malnikoff, who are members of my group for many years who are here, do their premier speaking engagement just now, the last hour for an hour and a half to some of you in one of the other rooms. And I watched them, and I knew them when they first joined with me, they were like I was. I was an abject failure, they weren't failures, but they certainly were not successes. And I've watched them transform their, their lives, their thinking, their actions, and their results over time. So I looked at them now, and I look at them 10 years ago, they're not the same person. Maybe their fingerprints are the same, Maybe their voice intonations are the same, but they're happy, healthy, prosperous. They're walking, talking, and living examples of what every man and woman on this earth want to be, regardless of their profession. Bringing it back to chiropractic, I could give you all their credentials, but it would eat up my 30 minutes, so the hell with them. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love them dearly. So what I learned when I came here, what is it? What was the thing that I learned? I learned the first day that I can, can choose to begin a journey, that success is a journey, not a destination, which is a seminar cliche. But it is a journey, because success doesn't go boom. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down in a tortuous path, right and left and up and down. And along the way, from one point and position in your life to another, there sometimes is adversity, yes or no? That you don't even know. God forbid someone passes away, or a, a clinic burns down, I've heard all of it, or there's a divorce, or a kid is sick, what, it gets in your way. Unless you understand the laws of the universe that what you fear the most, you attract the most, and what you see the most, and act on the most, also is attracted in the same dimensional field of energy. What is it do you want to create? So if I say to someone, what do you want in your practice, say more. More what? More patience, more volume, more money, better staff, more holidays, more time with my family, more gifts at Christmas time, they want more. How much more? What is it that you exactly want? What, how much time do you want to devote to it? So I came here, I was 29 years old, I'm 75 years old next month, right? I'm 50 years and I'm still here, not here because I'm teaching you, here because I'm still in this journey and things still happen to me. But I've learned to pop up like a little clown, pops up one more time than I'm knocked down. So seven days ago, my twin brother passed away, here I am. And I would be here if it was the day he passed away, if I said I was gonna be here. So here's the number one rule of success. Whatever you say to yourself, do it because your self is listening to yourself. Would you agree? Whatever you say, if you say I'm gonna go on a diet, as an example, then go on Monday, because no one goes on a diet on Saturday, you've got a day and a half to bulk up, <laughs> right? So if, so if it's Monday morning, I'm gonna go on a diet, on Monday morning you go on a diet. If you don't, not only don't you lose weight and get healthier and blah, 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 you're tr actually training your mind to fail. I said I want something, but you didn't take the action steps with the thoughts and feelings that go with it, so you didn't go on a diet. Next time you tell me something, I want to get a new patient, I want to have a great relationship, I want to be a better person, whatever it is you want, your mind says, yeah, you've said that before. So for everything that you say you're going to do that you do not do, your mind says, I'm learning, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, and the truth is we all say th more things that we don't do than we do do. Is that true? So we're actually training ourselves to fail and create problems.
It is a journey. There's ups and downs. There's black and white. There's fore and aft. There's, there's colors and there's no colors. There's, there's a, a, you know, positive and negative. There's the other side. So all of you want the positive. You want success. Yes, say yes. Health, happiness, prosperity, fulfillment, physical, uh, spiritual connection. Yes, 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 yes. But you don't want failure and depravity and sickness. No, 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 no then how come they exist? Because this is what you say you want, but you act and think on this side. How do you transform yourself? How did they, and how did so many more people that came to Parker, how did I? I walked in seeing 30 to 70 people a week, and I was lying at the 70 end, but I thought I can get away with that lie. It was 30, I was working three jobs to keep my foolish children in clothing and food, which they demanded. I, we're trying to get help for them. It's unbelievable. That's where I was. I, I did someone help me get here and fly me down on propeller planes out of Idlewild Airport. Now you know it as JFK. I didn't know anything. I was failing as a father, failing as a husband, failing financially, failing. I walked out of this seminar. It was in Fort Worth then, March 9th, 1969, a lot of years ago, with one piece of information. Do what you say and change your life, transform how you think, transform how you act, put a smile on your face even when someone dies, honor that person which I am doing to my brother by being here, not crying over him right now and grieving for the rest of you, honor him, he wants me to be successful and so does God, right? Success is good, making money is good, why? With, with making money you could feed a lot of people, with making money, you can build a church. With mo making money, you can educate children and stop wars. Yes, no. So why, there's no virtue in being poor or being alone. There's no virtue in seeing 100 people a week. If you're in a practice eight hours a day, 100 people a week is 33 people three times a week. So it's a journey. And you're gonna, we're going to test your, your fortitude to see who you are when you stand up. So yes, you can choose to begin your journey. Yes? So what's today's date? I don't know. 31st of October in 2015. And we're here in Dallas, Texas. And I, say I, state your name. I'm, I'm about to make a decision. And this is what my decision is. Every part of my life, I can't hear you, every part of my life gets better starting now. Nah, you're so weak. Ugh, ugh. You failed, failed. Starting when? Yeah. So it's not to make you yell out the words. It's your body is listening. I am healthy. I am successful. <laughs> if you want to look, then stand healthy. Do I look healthy? I'm 75. You're 33. You can throw me through that wall, but here is where I win. I look around and see what everyone in chiropractic is doing, and I go the other way because 80% of our profession fails in everything they do. I was in meetings this weekend all along, and my God, I would not, I didn't, I'm sorry I went. I don't want to hear stinking, thinking, doomy, glooming thoughts. I want people to support me and lift me up and hold me on to light and encourage me to be greater than I was trained to be. Yes, yes, or yes. Okay, so here we go. 80% of the world, 80% of the chiropractic profession I have, do, and be. They go like this. When I have more new patients, then I'll do what you're saying, Larry, and then I'm going to be happy and successful. 80% of the world, when they have something. So there was one woman, I said, well, what, when are you going to be happy already? She says, well, when, I, when the, my daughter gets married, when she has something, then I'll do what you're saying, Larry, then I'm really going to be happy when my daughter gets married. I said, yeah, but she's six. <laughs> what are you going to do for the next 14 or 15 or 16 years or whatever it is? Hang around? It's not have, do, and be. That's the world out there. Is the world out there making it? Yes or no? Is our profession making it? We stand here from platforms and say we're the best, we're, the not we're nothing, we're not even known. But there's a 20% in this profession, that, uh, like some of the gentlemen and ladies that I talked about, Brandy's in here, and I don't want to not mention names, and Robert Kipp and Gene Orlowski and Rick Renner, and I don't want to miss anybody. All these people are here to give, to serve, to give you something, as a result of which they win. 
I'm going to win from helping you. I'm not getting paid. I'm going to win by sharing with you the things I learned so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And the first thing is go to the bottom line. Be happy through anything that happens. Be successful. Be forthright. Have in, be a, a person with integrity. Be honest. Be all the good pro-survival values, right? And then do that what you say you're going to be. So if you say, I have integrity, then tell the truth. If you say I'm going to go on a diet, then go on a diet. If you say I'm going to exercise, do it. If you say I'm going to speak to human beings with enthusiasm and passion that come in my office. Some of you actually believe that it's your adjustment that helps, but your adjustment and technique is better than anyone else, or your modality is better. A laser is better than electrical muscle stimulation. Nonsense. It's you. I had the ple pleasure today, the pleasure, the healing to be adjusted by Rose Lapine, who's just up here. The, my redhead, my new redheaded girl. Is that okay? We'll we'll tell Huey later. Okay. And she adjusted me, and I got off the t table. Did I say this? Maybe she wouldn't have 20 minutes if we were in her office. She spent about 20 minutes with me. The minute she touched me, I'm a tough guy, right? And I and I have really phase nine cervical degeneration. I don't even have a bone. I have one disc that still works. The rest don't. But notice, I can still turn my head. The minute she touched me, I was able to drop my shoulders and relax. She reminded me one. I knew I was being touched by someone who had healing hands, who was loving me, visualizing me feeling better from the stress of this week. Do you know what I'm saying? She cared. I relaxed. And in my mind, I can I share this. I said, oh, my God, I'm feeling better. I know I'm getting better now. And as she was loving me and touching me, what was that adjustment worth? $40? If they had insurance, $50, $90, right? Why are you even in the insurance game? If you had courage and audacity, tenacity and guts, you would be practicing cash anyhow instead of being a third-party broker to get less. I don't understand that. So if you're in the insurance game, fine, that's your choice. But it's less than. Why don't you sit down this weekend and make a list of, if I had my druthers, if I had a magic wand, what would my practice look like? What would my volume look like? What would my fee? Who would I surround myself with for eight hours every day? What kind of team member would I have? How would I walk? How would I dress? Is it important how I look and present? So I just said to Tony Doremus, who's written a book, you should only have his practices and his beautiful wife and family, right? I said to him, Tony, great talk. Take your hands out of your pocket when you're talking to someone. Is that criticism? It means I'm insecure. It means I'm nervous. It takes your eyes away from his face and puts them in your hand. I also said he's dressed beautifully and immaculately. Wear a white shirt because it br or a lighter shirt. It brightens your face on stage. The, everything counts. Everything counts. The smell of your office, the flowers outside, the smile on the CA's face, the way she answered the phone. Everything counts in success. Yes or not? So if you think I can get away with it or it doesn't matter, you're choosing to lose. And then you say, I say to you, how long you in practice? You say 12 years. I say, what's your volume? You say 110 people a week. And I say, why? And you can't, well, I need more new patients. They said that to me 50 years ago. It's not that you need, you need a mind. You need guts. You need to be able to tell a patient what they need, not what they want. Now, patients want one adjustment in your, neck of the woods, not mine, not in my office, maybe yours, one adjustment, instant cure, yes, no charge, on Facebook. They don't even want to come out to your office, yes or no. You're laughing, but that's what they want. And how do they come to me and follow my program of initial intensive care, corrective care, and wellness care, and how come my PVA patient visit average was 70, 80, or 90, 70 when I had associates, 90 when I didn't, right? And how come my son sees 600 people a week, and Brett Axelrod, his partner sees 550 different states, different sizes, different genetic codes, different mothers and fathers, correct? How come? Because they think differently than 80% of their family and friends. That's your job to walk out of here thinking better, seeing, having visions. And I'll share it, so be, do, and have. When you're being happy, you'll do what successful people do, and you will have fulfillment, grace, joy, money, prosperity, and all. So I walked over to this person that was just giving out the guests, sorry, I'd forgotten her name, but the students that were screwed and they took their money, 
or were they not screwed? Did they meet wonderful people that you came up and you not only made them even, you gave them a little profit. And I was there and they showed me a book of me, March 9th, 1969, when I was chiropractor of the year 1971, when I was a Parker pal, I saw the picture. I had long hair and I was this tall. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, then I got married and she wore me down. Oh, uh, no more wife bashing jokes, she'll hear it. So I say it's all on your head. Everyone? Whose head? Really? So that means, did you say it's all in your head, the way you think, the way you act, your belief system, it's all in your head, yes or no? So now you can stop blaming everybody else because you just admitted it, it's all in your head. It's not your spouse, it's not your religion, it's not your town, it's not your city, it's not where you grew up, it's you on your choices you make right now. Let go of past failures. Forgive. The two big things that I learned here, one was easy for me, generosity, because I like to help people, yes? Okay, and I like to give my money. I was the first one to give her a couple hundred bucks, and I, Corey walked by. I said, Corey, give me $200. I didn't, he didn't say why. He gave $200. It's for students. Okay, and the next one, we raised $700 in about two minutes for these, for these kids, it, it, kids, young professional people that are going to be chiropractors soon, I hope. <laughs> kids, it's all in your head. It's in your head. So if you succeed, it comes from your head because the immutable law of the universe is om kitam nama, what goes around comes around. Is that a law or is it Larry's law? Is it a law? It's a law of physics. For every action is an equal opposite reaction. What goes around comes around. For what you see, sees you. If you see an empty reception room, it sees you. If you see people quitting, it sees you. If you see people not coming to healthcare class, that's what sees you. You get what you think. Is that right? See, I, you, you say that with such enthusiasm. Thank you very much. I'll see you. Okay, is that right? Yeah. No, you're wrong. <laughs> I, I baited you. It's not what you think. Thoughts plus action equal feelings. I just heard that from one of your uh, PowerPoints. Thoughts plus equal feelings, and your feelings attract your life to you. If you fear getting fired, you're going to get fired. Or you're going to create situations that cause you to get fired. If you fear that you won't have money, you're going to have no money. If you fear that you're capable, you will gain capabilities or people that will add to your talent. The universe will take care of it if you have faith that there's something bigger than you. And, and I'm not talking about your religion. That's your business. But it's certainly there's something bigger than us finite human beings that's running this whole shebang. And it's not a good world, is it? But we can make it a better world. There's killings going on, there's rapes, there's murders, there's starvation. Ridiculous. Why? Because they're thinking of people. Let's kill this one. Let's kill, let, let's do it by wrong to get right. The only way you get right is by creating right. Where do you create in your mind? So I do mind exercises. When my kids say something to me, my son and my grandson are at the World Series tonight. Thank you very much. My tickets, because I'm talking to you. I guess I wanted to, no, 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 don't give me applause. I'd rather be there. Just let's, <laughs> let's, let's be clear. Let's be totally clear. But I need your help. Just say Mets once, please. Thank you very much, because now I got 100 and something people putting a universal intelligence, a good wave that they're going to get hot tonight. I like that. It's all in your head. Why, why do we even think bad thoughts? So uh, when did you guys see this? This, by the way, these cartoons were drawn when I studied with Walt Disney himself by a Disney artist in 1982, drew this. I went back just now, Mike Scott, who's the genius behind this thing, and, and Johnny back there, yes, yes, yes. Uh, they, that's all? Mike Scott, everybody! And Johnny. See, they make us look good, they really do. So th look at this. 20 something, 30 something years. And it's saying, see the lady there? It's mommy, and the guy next to him in the glasses is daddy, mother, father. The person next to it is the teacher. They probably have a, a sport coat on because teachers wear sport coats, right? And then a preacher, not a clergy with a college backward. Mother, father, teacher, preacher. So your mother's a strong influence in your life, yes or no? Even if she's dead, God forbid, yes or no? Because it's genetic. It's the thinking is musical people are created in musical families. You ever notice that? It's passed on genetically. It's unbelievable. 
okay? Father, the old-fashioned disciplinarian, not today's uh, sharing couples, that raising a family, old-fashioned. Teachers, not only teachers in school, but is there newspapers a teacher? Yes or no? New, uh, television, right? Peer pressure? Teachers in school, kindergarten, religious institutions, college, they teach you stuff, much of which is not true. But because you are taught by an authority, you believe it to be true. And if you act, believe it to be true, you act on it as if it's true. But it's not true. You do not have to fail. You can be prosperous. Rich people are not necessarily thieves. I'm a rich person, and I don't feel like I'm a thief in any way, shape, or form. But I'm tenacious and arrogant in fighting a disease called negativity and poor self-image. So I'm, the, I'm known as the complainer around a lot of stuff because I see what's wrong, not what's right. And the people say, well, applaud me. Okay, good. I'm paying you to be right and be a great doctor. I deserve to have you. Do you see, I, I acknowledge your greatness, but I see something that's wrong. The CA doesn't have a smile on her face. In my office, I saw no smile. I said, are you feeling well? I don't see a smile. She said, yeah, yeah, but there's some, some, I'm okay, I'm doing my job. No, you're not. The smile is your job. The making an appointment is not your job. A monkey can do that. I can talk into my telephone and get that done. Yes or no? And pretty soon, did you, I saw on the, on, you know your GPS system? Take me to the Sheridan Hotel, and it gives you the map. Make a right, make a left. Nod your head if you're alive. Okay? The new ones are going to be on your windshield. You're going to say, take me to kind of on your windshield that the person can't see. I've seen it already. It's coming. Your map is going to be right in front of you so you don't have to look down at your little console or your phone. Amazing, right? That's technology. Your mind is smarter than any technology ever made now or ever will be made because your mind is creating the technology. There's nothing different. The mind, you're capable of reassembling the molecules and the thoughts and creating something. They've always existed. We just didn't have the knowledge. Or did we? We had the knowledge, and we're discovering now that we have the knowledge, so we take the action step. Mother, father, teacher, preacher. So I grew up in a dysfunctional family. Ba 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 ba. Right? And I didn't have a great relationship with my brother just passed because we were pitted against each other. Why weren't you like this? Why weren't you like your brother? Why... I got a B, a B, why didn't you get an A? It didn't work for me. I left the family, my brother left the family, and I stayed with my mother who was 99, and I visited her every day to keep myself in the environment that was negative, guilt, right? So that I could learn to overcome that guilt, okay? I would say, Mom, I'm visiting you for an hour. She'd say, if you're only coming for an hour, why come at all? Thank you very much. I just flew in, I had no sleep, I'm coming for an hour just to see you. So that was my upbringing. I'm not saying it's yours. So maybe if I was born with people that were more loving and warm, maybe I'd be a better person. Or maybe that I didn't have a good upbringing, I'm a better person because I had to work on it. And if I had to work it, if I could do it, if Tony can do it, and if uh, Corey can do it, and every, all of you, then if we can do it, you can do it. But it takes work. And the first time you go out and you're all positive now and you get a flat tire outside, you're going to start crying and kicking the tires. Or if the kids get sick, you're going to go in fear. I wonder what's going to happen. Chiropractic is great, but now I'll get them three shots. Who are you? It's who you are that determines how well what you do work, what your life looks like, not what you do. I can pay people to build my house. I can pay people to work my computer, yes or no. But I only I can create the environment in my family. So just now, just before I got on, I'll prove it to you on Facebook. Look on Facebook and look on the marks, and you'll see my son wearing his number 12 uniform from the New York, New York Mets because he played in the Dream Week. I played in 1986 Dream Week with the with New York Mets, and my grandson, who sent me a text, ha, 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 I got your tickets. <laughs> no, see, that makes me cry. That's my grandson. What are your kids getting from you? They're getting from you that you're drinking beer, you're not seeing patients, you gotta save up. Start saving money, 10% of what you earn right now. Yes, you can. Ooh, so you, what is it uh, I'm talking about? I'm talking about your self-image. I'm speaking fast because I have limited time today. You ready for faster? Because I have a lot of work. I already took out 20 slides. So here, I'm sloppy, I'm organized, I'm lucky, I can't spell, I'm too shy, I'm too nervous, I'm too fat, I can't get new patients, no one staff wants to stay with me, patients won't stay three times a week because they never asked them. 
to come three times a week or told them it was necessary for their health and it takes time to get sick and it takes time to get well and you're going to do it my way, your, not your way. And it's not about pain, it's about the body. One, getting rid of the pain. Two, after the pain goes away, making corrections and healing. That's what the body is built to do. It's genetic. You can't stop it. It wants to heal itself. And then after that, it gets that way. Stay around long enough so the chances of the original condition uh, becomes remote so we go into a wellness program. Wellness program in my house, in my office, patients set goals, written goals. They did affirmations. Did you do an affirmation today? Raise your hand if you did. Raise your hand if you didn't. Please be honest. Thank you very much. So the ones that didn't, so you're letting the world set your affirmation versus today is going to be a great day. That's mine today, let's say. Right? I am a healthy, vital, active, and successful human being. I affirm this day that all tissues in my body are functioning perfectly, and that is the way it is supposed to be. I'm more relaxed than ever before because I choose peaceful, loving thoughts and release my fears, my worries, and my anxieties. Tension is gone because I'm a creator. Do you get it? I tell myself what to feel. I work on myself. My book was called Talking to Yourself is Not Crazy, and I talk to myself, and I am crazy, so the title's wrong. I'm crazy about being successful and being a good parent and being a good husband and being a good friend, but getting it right. I'm crazy about helping this place get to the way that you can't get in the door, right? And it was that way, but it can't be the way it used to be anymore. It has to be doing a new way because it's a new world, yes or no. And right now, the brains behind Parker are taking steps. I just came from a meeting to ameliorate everything that you're seeing and make it better and bigger and more pa uh, pertinent and put an energy field behind it. And it's turning. I'm behind the scenes and I see that it's turning. But it'll get there. Once again, Parker will return to the glory of what I had when you couldn't get in the door when there were 6,000 people, real numbers, 6,000 people standing and applauding every speaker because they were getting its and bits from this one and that one. It was just, and hugging and kissing, it was just, I thought the whole world was gay. <laughs> to change the image, you change the what? So do you agree that if you have a poor self-image, your life will reflect it? Do you agree with that? So where did your self, poor self-image come from? What age? Three to six. Can you go back and change it just like that? No, do you want to blame your mother and your father? I don't, I forgave them. You know why you don't forgive the person that hurt you, an ex-husband, a, a biz deal went bad, a brother, a sister, a mother that you didn't have a relationship? Anybody have a, a bad relationship in their life? Right, but, and, and think you forgave them? Well, how many, when I mention a name, you'll feel something, because you're still 20 years later carrying it. The reason you don't forgive someone that hurt you, which is the best lesson in your life to go forward, is you feel that if you forgive someone, you're making them right when you were right. But they think they're right. And the fact is, it doesn't matter if you're right or not, if you, you are a chained slave to anyone you dislike. They own you if you haven't forgiven them. So they win, anyone you hate, Anyone you don't admire, anyone you don't like, anyone you point your finger at, right, is winning. And if you want them to win, take that action. Or just simply bless them and forgive them. They're out of your life now or heal it. And the way you heal it is you knock on the door. I'm going now tonight to see my nephew, my bro twin brother's son, who was estranged from the, his sister years ago because he likes right and wrong. He's black and white. And she got into drugs when she was a kid. She's 50 years old now and kid. Does that happen? Yes. Do we like it to happen? No. And he judged her that she's a drug addict. And I said to him, David, she hasn't done drugs for 25 years. She's a substantial woman, but she lost part of her life, and she didn't know how to grow up in the 16, 17, 18 to 22 when she's on drugs. She didn't know herself as a woman. And she has four children. She lives with a bum of a guy until next week when she's finally moving out because over the graveside, I grabbed them together and I said, this relation is healing now and I don't even know them, right? This relation is handing now. And then at the end of the day, when they were saying goodnight, I was watching and I saw them hug and kiss and they have spoken every single day for the last eight days since he passed. My question, of course, because I think negatively, I was taught to, why was my brother have to die to create this? Got it? but they are going to carry on his legacy now is the goodness. Look for the good and you'll find the good. Change the image to change who you are, you change your act. You act as if you're successful. 
So if you're seeing a small volume, it's because you think small, you act small, you have fears, you have doubts, you have uncertainties, you can't make a decision. Those are the things that hurt your practice, not that you don't have patience. You don't have patience because they don't want to come to you because you're afraid. And you're low tone. And you want to be loved by everybody. God loves you, your family loves you. you know, shut up and go fix some spines. Do something. Do something. Take a shot. Be honest with people. It can't hurt you to be good. It cannot hurt you to help people. And if they need 40 or 50 and 90 adjustments, tell them. And if they walk out the door, they're not the right one. It's the universe testing you to see if they should send you 20 or 40 other people that want to stay 90 visits for making all this up. Do you get what I'm saying? No problem philosophy. Anticipate the good even during the bad. Release. You've got to release all these hurts from the past. Oh, my God. I gotta, you want to hear mine? So Parker's going to hire me or work with me to do a cabin experience in the future we're working in that, where I pay 25 people at a time, lock you up. It wasn't a mountaintop until they just sold the place. I'm having one in December in my home in Boca Raton, Florida. 25 people, no cell phones, no communication with the outside world, where we do nothing, no lecturing, just talking in jeans and T-shirts and flip-flops. No identification, you know, to who you are, no showing off aloud, no egos invited. Do we strip you down in a harmless way? You don't have to say, hi, I'm Larry, I'm an alcoholic, I don't care. Why are you here? What is your intent? Is my care? And we work for 60 hours together and miracles are formed. And Tony and Patty, his wife is a cabin, and, and Corey, you were, and his staff was, and everybody else was, and Rose is going to come, and you know, and you're all invited w when, when it happens. But what do we do? Why do their practices grow? We never mention the word chiropractor. We never mention a procedure, do we? Yes or no? Do we? Never. We're just talking about them. Them purging like a computer and sending themselves away, okay, and, 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 and moving on. And as you purge, as you throw out the garbage, there's room for good. Take an eight ounce glass, throw out 20% of the crap in your life, and what's left? 20% space to put in more good stuff. Pour out another 20%, we put in more good stuff. All of a sudden, your th thinking is changing and your actions changing, okay? So, shedding, it's shedding. Jim Parker said, inner success is not a matter of adding anything, it's a matter of shedding. You can't come to a Parker seminar to get anything to learn, you're filled up. Get rid of the crap and you can learn everything like that. And you don't even have to come to a seminar, go on YouTube, there's everything you want. It's unbelievable right now. So when you say to me, Larry, I'm trying, trying to lose weight, I'm trying to have a good relationship with my husband, I'm learning, my wife, I'm trying to make money, I'm trying, that means you don't want to. There's no such thing as try, you are doing it or you're not doing it, goodbye. So right now, you want to learn so. It's a declaration of your independence. So it says, I choose to live in my cause, I choose to be responsible for me, and I choose to change. Can you say this? I'll read it with me. I choose to what? Choose I choose to? Choose and I choose? Change. Starting when? Right. No. No past the minute you said it. Look at the top blue words. When you change? Right now, this instant, right now, are you going to change? Pick a thought, do an affirmation, write a goal, do a visualization. The mind thinks in pictures, and I'm going to show you that right now because I see the computer sticking down. We have a marvelous thing built in, it's a marvelous computer called the subconscious mind. So you have the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, left brain is the conscious mind, right brain is the subconscious mind, left brain is mathematical and languaging and dotting the I's and coarse and T's and technique and algebra and language. Do you know what I'm saying? Right brain is art and music and sunsets and the art of creation. We want to use the left brain because we were given one to be smart, but we want to create with our right brain. Does that sound okay? So here's a palette. I'm an artist and I look at it. What am I going to create? My right brain just does it. My talent, my skill uses the right colors and the right brush strokes and gets the art done. Get what I'm saying? You see a building and an architect builds it. You see a practice is filled in the reception room and the end of the month numbers reflect it. Do you get what I'm saying? You create it and it's reflected. What you see in the universe sees you. So the subconscious mind, so let me show you how it works quickly. Top mind, this is circles of inner success. You know what uh, circles mean? It's the most perfect geometrical figure. There's no beginning, no end. It is perfectly harmonious. It is the 
shape of the universe, the earth is round, the sun is round, the equator goes around, what goes around comes around, right? So we use a circle. The top part is the conscious mind, which is the left brain, so I could split it, but I'm gonna do it above down. And then you, the uh, bottom part is the right brain. Do you see that? Yes, can you see it? Because I didn't look at the screen behind me. All right, top brain, conscious mind, educated mind. It's the computer programmer. It's what you think. So you're programming as if you're sitting in front of a computer, what do you think? And it's the originator of thought. So this is what I think and I'm gonna type it up and I'm gonna put it in my goals. Or whatever it is, positive or negative, you're typing it. And then on the bottom is your subconscious mind, which is your innate, meaning inborn mind, which is your computer hard disk or the executor or servant of your conscious mind. You tell it what to do, it's doing like this. Right hand, make a fist. So my mind told the nerves to, to, to told the muscles to make a fist, release it, and it goes on. That's voluntary, but involuntarily the same way. Would you agree? So you create it. So what happens if you thought you're fat? And every time you look at yourself and you thought you're fat, that fat image goes into the subconscious mind and once ever in the subconscious mind is planted there like a garden. So you can plant in, in your garden different, you can take just handfuls of seeds and throw them in a garden and water and nurture it. What do you get? the result of a handful of seeds, all scattered. Or you can plow it and furrow it and put it in uh, corn and beets and radishes and squash or whatever you want to plant and, and water it and till it and love it and what grows? Exactly what you planned, yes or no? The mind works that way. So if you're failing in life, you're planning to fail by putting the wrong things in your subconscious mind, but you can never get rid of your subconscious mind because mother, father, teacher is always there. My past is always there. I just related some of it to you. Not good, but it's always there. I've repeated it so many times that I've learned my self-image was not good. So I had to repeat more often and louder and with more energy and passion the good thoughts to keep it, but it's always there. And in, when you get afraid, when someone punches you in, in your nose, you go back to the way you used to be. I don't want to be the way I want, used to be. I want to be a new, improved 2016 model. Yes? Okay. So what opens the trap door? What connects the conscious mind from the subconscious mind that draw opens its emotion? Is love an emotion? Say habla inglés. Is love an emotion? Yeah, your marriages are great, thank you. Is love an emotion over here? Is hate an emotion? Which is stronger? Love, women all say that. And that's all I heard was women. Men you don't know from this dropout for two minutes. Hate is stronger. Love is more sustaining, more nurturing, more long-lived life. Lived, lasts longer. Yes, no? Okay, hate, you can grow an oak, a redwood tree in, in California 200 years in all its majesty. One lightning bolt could take it down. Right, one hurricane can take down a community. Hate is stronger. Lose it. Lose jealousy and hate and vindictiveness and judgment. Lose it. Those that judge, you judge, judge you and you can't stand the test. Everything that you're thinking about someone else, you're reflecting that the world should look back at you and see your faults. Instead of you accept them. Corey and Tron, the good friend of mine, and another absolute winner, winner, winner today, and we had a, uh, a talk today, and the next thing I know, I suggested something, I, and I get a text, I did it. I didn't even ask him to do something. I suggested something, he did it. Is he a winner? Yes. He let go of the old and put in place the new, okay? So, watch this. Transmitters and receivers. I'm transmitting now, are you receiving? Okay, but if, I, if this was hooked up to a, a satellite, could I transmit to China? Sure, but are there any wires? No, but I can transmit. So, is my body language transmitting to you that I know what I'm talking about or not? Anybody here that has never seen me before? Oh, how well, unfortunate for you, I'm so sorry. <laughs> do I know what I'm talking about? Yes or no? Do I love chiropractic? Do I like speaking to people? How do you know? I never told you. You what? Feel it, yes or no? What do your patients feel when they walk in your door? Is it a place of happiness, of love, of caring, and of skill, or is it just you needing another patient to check off the list with a whip? Okay, CA, bring in more new patients. Unbelievable, so watch this. We, Universal intelligence above whatever it is, is hooked through the innate mind, the subconscious mind is hooked to the intelligence of the universe. That's the part of you that creates anything you want like the universe does. So you originate a thought, 
Okay, where am I here? Okay, see the X right under originator in the conscious mind? You originate a thought, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a more successful chiropractor. And you act the part and you lose weight and you set goals and you do affirmations, you do visualizations. The mind thinks in pictures. Close your eyes and think what you want, picture it. Picture it like a director sees a movie and makes the actor and actress play the part. Play the part of success. And these forces, these energy fields of your conscious mind goes into your subconscious mind, links up with uh, universal intelligence, and a wave goes out to three people in your community. The first person, because you're a, a Francis Murphy specific, wonderful knowledge chiropractor, that the first person knows you're like that and sucks you right into your office when they're walking by, they can't even stop. They get sucked in your office, right? But the second person likes um, voodooism. So your beam is not aligned with them. It jumps the second person and it'll get the next one. You create your patient base. You create the ones that don't respond. You create the ones that come and respond. How did I get better results than most chiropractors in my neighborhood when I started last? Not because I was a better manipulator or adjuster or I can read x-rays better. How many of you can adjust? Did that ever build your practice? You have to have someone to adjust. It's no good to be a good adjuster if there's no one on your table. Okay, so you pick the right person. What about money? What are you worth? There's an pr invisible price tag on your sleeve. What am I worth? Are you worth 100,000 a year, 200,000 a year, 50,000 a year, 5 million? What are you worth? It's a tag and everybody will see it by the way you talk, your generosity, your attitude, your passion, your, your caringness. It comes through. I get through arrogance because they know I love what I do. I tell a lot of people right out, I went to a guy, I don't like your tie knot. You're wearing a Windsor tie, it's 1980. Get rid of the Windsor knots, it makes you look like a nice guy. They don't want a nice guy, they want a strong, powerful, healing chiropractor that's also a nice guy or girl. Got it? They want both, but they're gonna be attracted to what? Power or weakness? Power. Power comes from your heart, not your brain. Comes from your, do, do, does that make sense to you? Whoa, I'm out of time and there's a good speaker. I'm, I'm finishing up, I'll be done in a minute. Here we go, next one. There's a car under that, you, uh, there's a heart under that, you can't see it, can you? Oh yes, you can on the screen. Your love life, attract into your life the perfect person for you. Make your family one unit, one heart. Attract the car you want, the home of your dreams, or nothing, it's up to you to do that. Have I made myself clear in 30 minutes? I'm sorry for being so rapidly, I wish I had more time, but I don't, so you use what's available to you. And, and so Dr. Glowacki is gonna come out in a moment and finish, and he's a young, vital, active, and happy and successful chiropractor, and I'm looking forward to sitting with you and listening to him. I bless you, I thank you for putting up with my BS for all these years, but I, let me leave you with this message. Six, no one is gonna help you but you. They are interested in them. Lastly, go like this. Everyone, I'll come down and get you. I'm coming down. Go like loud, shh. Put your finger down. Stop telling everyone your story. They don't care. Stop telling your story. Start beginning to build a new and happier life. Fair? Good night. <laughs>